We ask that you cover and protect each and every vigil. Father, we ask that you give them travel mercies for those who are traveling. Um, this is not a vent session. This, this is not a session for people to come and vent and talk about your garbage not being picked up and you know, your discontent with the mayor or discontent with, with the police department. Tonight's meeting is a movement in the right direction for getting resolution to how we are going to get our children to stop killing each other and how we're going to get these guns off the streets and out of their hands. So we want to keep it, you know, so anybody that may be speaking, if you go left, I'm going to guide you back right. And, and respectfully, you know, I'm not going to do anything out of, out of, out of uh, distaste, um, but I just want to make sure that we all understand. So, you know, whatever comments or concerns Thank you have. You, Darren, um, we usually get into trouble when we start naming people because, you know, we forget to name certain people in the room. But um, you're all important today because you're probably all going to be part of the solution. So a good evening to everyone here. Uh, again, let's thank Reverend Easley for allowing us to use his church and opening this up to the community. Let's give him a hand, please. Well, thanks to Salia for leading and putting this together. I also, I mean, the fact that there's so many of you that have been in this fight for so long, I realize that, you know, this is going to be quite lengthy. The first thing I wanted to just say to everyone here is the fact that there are effective models when it comes to interrupting violence in certain communities. You have experts here that may not have been trained by law enforcement agencies or any, but collectively, when you take law enforcement and you add community-based organizations and you take individuals from the community that love their young people, we can do some things. Oh. I just wanted to real quickly talk about something called the Uniondale Violence Intervention Partnership, which we ran for three years in Uniondale. And we focused on that Hempstead Uniondale border where we were losing 13, 13, where 13,000 people live. We made up 73, 74% of the homicides in a county of 1.3 million. So what that means is 1% of the population was making up 73, 74% of the murders. And if you throw in the rest of the corridor, right, which is why the corridor, uh, the, the corridor counts was founded, and it, you literally are hitting 90-something percent of the homicides when you look at these communities. We focused on three things, prevention, uh, crisis response, and alternatives. Now, prevention was really aiming with fifth, sixth, and seventh graders and eighth graders. If you want to stop gang, you know, young people from joining gangs, that's the population you got to focus on. Evidence, everything we know is really is showing us that our kids do well until they get to the fifth grade and transition to that middle school. We have Mr. Hank Williams that is opening his doors and saying, come on in, help me out. So what we need to start doing is developing some resources. The same people that are in this room right now can go in there and start saving some of those lives. The crisis response was a real simple thing. In the first precinct, whenever there was a shooting, a serious homicide or whatever, the first phone to ring after the 911 call and it being sent to dispatch was my phone. And what I did was I contacted whoever the crisis response group was on that night. Now, it was always made up of a clergy person, community-based organizations, and people from the school. You know why? These are the folks that usually know these young people in some way, somewhere along the lines you can engage through that way. What we brought were resources. Individuals like crime victims. You know, you got families that are dealing with this trauma. They can't afford to, you know, your child just got shot in front of the house. There's blood stains on the driveway. Who wants to go to that house? You know, there were resources. Our kids, our parents can't even afford to, to raise funds to send a kid to college, let alone a funeral or a hospital bill. There were a bunch of resources that were available that members in our community didn't know. So we started doing all kinds of things. And what was happening was individuals were able to, after a shooting, now all of a sudden Val McFadden is calling me up. I'm calling the people I know. And we're standing on a corner right where the shrine is, right? Except now you've got people that are known in the community. And it serves as a point of intervention saying, listen, this is the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh person you've lost already in two, three years. We can't keep this cycle going. And we were engaging parents early on so that they could be that voice, the same way these, these parents were that said, I love you, to so whoever did this, I love you. Like, that's the kind of messaging that needs to come out of this. We need to start coming up with strategic plans. Now, we already have something. We do a crisis response training. It literally takes three hours, three and a half hours. There's other folks here that have other expertise. 
if we could get a room like this filled with individuals that on the, uh, literally at sometimes at 12, 1 in the morning are willing to say, look, for this night, I'm on duty, right? And now that first team, whenever they get that call, we have a pastor, we have a clergy, you know, we have somebody from the community, and we have a teacher or a social worker, someone that's real well known. Now we respond. That's the kind of stuff that's going to be effective. You know, I'm, I'm glad to hear that it's not going to be a lengthy agenda, like uh, regarding resumes and all that kind of stuff. Um, because what we need now, and I think I saw it on Facebook today, was we're tired of meetings. We actually want some action steps. So what I, on behalf of Strong, what I simply wanted to say is we have a crisis response plan. We have a crisis response team. That Unidale Violence Intervention uh, team, used to, the, the partnership, would meet once a month. And this could be a place where you bring people from the, built, from the middle schools and the high schools in particular, but we even included the elementary school social workers and principals at those meetings where there was information sharing and talking about how do we start targeting these little brothers and sisters now and, and preparing them for alternatives. So, you know, I just want to tell you on behalf of Strong Youth Inc., that's something that we're committed to do. If you guys pass a list and that's something you want to do, we can do this by next week. On a Saturday morning, we pass this permission here or, you know, or, or anywhere else for that matter. So I just wanted to leave you guys with that. Mr. Bruins is making me go to law school, so I gotta go. <laughs> um, Thank I, you. I, I got a phone call earlier today, you know, that another kid uh, in North Avalon uh, got shot. Uh, that happened early this afternoon. Um, so I'll, I'll get the rest of the details. I'm pretty sure unless Mr. Spadden gets it before I do. Um, but we'll probably have to go out there and see exactly what happened. You know, that, you know, in that particular neighborhood, you know, which is really on my way home. Um, this is real serious, you know. And although this is an emergency meeting, okay, I want to stress the importance and stress the fact that we need to leave here tonight for resolutions. We're not going to have a meeting just to have a meeting so we can have a conversation. That's not what this is. We're going to leave here with constructive input, and we're going we're gonna to leave here with input. We're going to leave here with a resolution to start moving forward. Most importantly, are you, the community resident. Uh, so again, I'll just ask you before you get up, before we want to hear some some issues. Um, really, the issues are really around crime and around guns. So please, any other issues that you may have tonight is not the forum or the night, the, the setting for this. Uh, it is strictly for gearing for how we are going to get these guns off the street and how we're going to attack the killings in our community. You know how we're going to put it into that. And the one thing I will say to you is that. I need each and every one of you that are here right now, I need a commitment from you. I need a commitment. Because I'm committed, and I know my partners are all committed, you know, and, and attacking this groundwork. But I need a commitment from you, from you. You know, so as you're sitting here tonight and you're listening to other things that are going to be said and done, um, just bear in mind, okay, if you're here tonight, what level of commitment are you willing to make to help save your community? So uh, without any further ado, uh, John Nett is here, uh, one of our other partners. Uh, John, you want to say a couple words to us? No, go ahead. Been wondering? Uh, all right. All right, so. Set the floor. Charles? Listen, I think that the statistics and stuff and all the technology that you spoke of is fine. But what do we do before we get there? Right. I think the technology is great. Mm -hmm. But there's a problem underneath here that's, uh, that's an undercurrent here. That something needs to be done before we get the shot. That shouldn't be any fire shot fire. Right. right. You know. So what do we do while we're getting you know this shot fired? All these statistics are great, but what do we do back at home? You know. Meanwhile, back at the ranch. Right. These kids are still killing each other. Right. I don't think they're going to care too much about shot fire. <laughs> the thing of it is, we need to try and get to these families, get to these kids, or get to somebody before this stuff happens. Your statistics are great. However, right. we need to do something to. To kind of control those statistics or drop those statistics, say something to the parents, talk to the kids, you know, get somebody in here. I mean, we have a lot of groups here. In fact, there's too many groups in Hempstead. Right. There's a group here, there's a group there. When are we going to come together as a community? It doesn't matter who's in charge as long as we're getting results. Right. So, I have gone to meetings and meeting after meeting. I have sat back, and when I don't have anything to say, you know, it's 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 a good thing to listen. Right. God gave me two ears so I could hear twice as much as I talk. Right. But well, we've been dancing with this thing here for years, right. going around in circles. So what are we going to actually do? What are we going to actually do about these kids being killed in the streets 
This is not a political move here. Superman is not coming here. He's not coming. It's up to us to solve our problems. And I think in order to solve those problems, we have to go out into the community and deal with the parents where the grassroots, where this thing started. As I stated before, shot fires is great. It's a great thing to have. However, that is not one, that's not the main issue. After shots is fired, they had shots fired on the ice last week. The kids still got killed. So what are we going to do about that? Uh, so Charles, what, you, what you're saying is that we should go identify these children, and after identifying them, we need to go to their parents? Is that Well, right? that's one of the things. But I heard uh, Sergio talk about the group that the fifth graders. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you're talking a fifth grader. We have Mr. Benjamin right here. Yep. We have Heaven. We have all these group organizations that's around to do something. Listen, the gate is already open. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if we don't be careful, all the horses are going to be gone. We won't have any kids here. Right. Listen, I'm depending on them so they can take care of me. Right. So we need to do something. All right, and I'm going to I got a, I got a response to that. You want, you want to go yeah. for it? Okay. I'm going to be brief. There's something going on in um, Queens. It's called Cure Violence. And what happened is the health department stepped in because the murder rate for Latinos and blacks is so high. So now they consider it a health issue. Mm -hmm. So I'm not good at research. I'm not too good at writing. I, got, I know some people, and cure violence is one of the things where we can kind of get some resources and kind of do what he said, go into the streets. They, they train people to be interrupters. So they're in the streets, and they kind of, a lot of times they get information before things happen, because a lot of this is not even gang related. A lot of it's interpersonal stuff. Like, I got beef with him because he said something to my girl, and, and now it got out of hand, and now, you know, we had a fight, and he beat me up. And, you know, I can't take too many lumps because I'm a handsome dude. And, and I want to come back and do something for them. You understand what I'm saying? So it's not all gang related. They, sometimes they just label the gang, but it's a little interpersonal stuff. And the people <coughs> going to the streets and getting trained for that. The fifth, the fifth and sixth grade is where it all starts at. It's enough people in here. Enough, like he said, enough agencies. So if everybody go in and grab 15 kids, and that organization just work with those 15 kids, it can happen. Hank Williams, uh, Mr. Strong, probation, um, Sergio, and myself, but mostly Hank and them, and probation, they know the next shooters. She just said identify them. There's, there's not too many of them out there that are the next shooters, but Hank Williams knows, probation knows, and I, and, and I know some of them. Right. So if we can galvanize and just, just do something, really give them what they need right there, you can do something. Um, and it's not really difficult, but like I said, I'm going to give you my 100%. I'm going to leave kind of early, but I'm going to look at the minutes. Wherever y'all need me to get in, I'm going to get in. Uh, with Sean, okay. and the other organizations in the room, what I want to do, uh, I'll see your hand up, is do this, because this is going to be critical, okay? Assembling teams and getting people to volunteer to be able to go, get back into the community. Listen, my ad is trying to protect and serve. There was a key point and a key missing connection, which is protect and serve and the, the relationship between community and police. And nine times out of ten, if I said to everybody in this room right now, how many of you guys really trust the police, okay? Half of you pop. How many people trust the police? Yeah, raise your hand. Depends. Okay. So three people. Okay. We love you, brother. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's an issue. That's an issue. So Charles, the answer to your question is, what are we gonna do before shot spotter? Is it because we need to get into these homes? I have personally done this with a friend of mine who's a social worker and gone into some homes over the years, mentored kids and, and, and mentored adults. That's an issue. So I think what we can start to do is we're going to create programming and create locations because some of these parents need help with these kids. They're not, they, they need help themselves. So we have to be the help for them. When they, when they have an issue, if a, if a parent says, listen, I need, I'm having a problem with my son and daughter, okay? We have to be able to provide them with the necessary resources and training. And it not, it's not always money. Sometimes it's time that we need to give to them. It's time. So tonight, that's one of the things that I'm going to get from everybody here, is your name, your phone number, an email address, and how much time you're going to be able to give to make this work. Because what we're going to have to do is hit boots to the ground, okay? And we're going to take it back, okay? And then we'll work on two different levels. We're going to work on a street level. We're going to work on an administrative level, okay? And together, we're going to bridge the community, and we're going to get it back.